Recent capsizing highlights the dangers for thousands of migrants and the strains it places on Europe's resources. Joining us now is Kathleen Newland. She's co-founder of the Migration Policy Institute. That is a think tank based here in Washington that studies the movement of people worldwide. Uh, just an incredible influx of people trying to make their way to Europe. Um, it seems as though Libya has been the driver, at least has been the focus. Are there other issues driving this thing, or is that still the primary concern? Syria is the primary concern, and they're the largest number of people boarding these boats to get across the Mediterranean are Syrian. The, but there's, there's a big variety, and there, what we're seeing right now is a confluence of crises uh, all over the Middle East and Africa, ranging from what's happening in Yemen now, where you know, you used to see people from Somalia going to Yemen. Now that traffic is reversed. Uh, and those people will probably be making their way to Libya, trying to get on boats to Europe. Uh, so you still have crises in Somalia. You have new crises in uh, West Africa, in the Central African Republic, in Mali. People making their way up to the coast of the Mediterranean, looking for a place where not only they can be safe, but they have some chance of being able to earn a living. And this is a lot of what's driving the traffic from Syria now. The, the conflict is entering its fifth year. People who are refugees in Jordan or Turkey or Lebanon are running out of resources and just pretty desperate to be able to get someplace else where they'll, they'll be safe, they'll be able to make a living, their kids will be able to go to school. Um, As you look at the uh, geography, um, uh, you know, you, you look at uh, Chad, uh, you know, you have the influx of people coming from Nigeria. We've been talking about hundreds of thousands of just children alone uh, leaving Nigeria. And, and this driving force that you're talking about, looking for jobs, looking for opportunities. You look at that terrain, Egypt also somewhat unsettled. Um, are we just seeing the tip of the iceberg? I mean, can it get worse? Is it going to get worse? Well, it certainly has gotten worse over the last two years, uh, and particularly in the Mediterranean region. You know, in 2013, there were probably about maybe 70,000 people who crossed the Mediterranean, you know, on, the, on these uh, smugglers' routes. Last year, there were 218,000, and this year, we're already seeing a uh, an acceleration of the rate in the winter months, which usually are the really quiet time. You know, the Mediterranean is stormy, it's cold, it's even more dangerous to cross than it usually is, and yet the rates are accelerating and the number of deaths, tragically, are accelerating fast. Jack, Jack Barton's uh, piece, uh, we learned, heard from one of the EU officials saying, we're approaching this with eyes wide open. Uh, there's been some criticism. Do you think their eyes are wide open or not? Well, I think their eyes are, are open, but um, unmoved. I mean, the, the failure of the European countries to come together and mount a serious search and rescue operation in the Mediterranean is bound to cause uh, more fatalities. You know, up until uh, this past autumn, uh, the Italian Navy was mounting a search and rescue operation that was that rescued tens of thousands of people, but it was costing them $10 million a month. And as you know, Italy is in a, a major economic mm -hmm. crisis. They really couldn't afford to keep going with it uh, and have spent a lot of time urging the Europeans to step into the breach. But what the Europeans have come up with is, is grossly inadequate to the task. It's, it's really just a border protection operation. Here in the United States, obviously, we have a, a border issue with migrants uh, flooding into the United States as well. And, and in many cases, uh, I grew up in Southern California, you would hear these horrific stories about coyotes who just really did not value the lives of the people that they were transporting. Are we seeing the same thing uh, here? I mean, give me an idea of what's it like to be on one of those boats trying to traverse the waters, get into Italy to try and have an opportunity. Well, if you just seeing the pictures of the boats, which I'm sure your viewers have seen, I mean, they're unbelievably overcrowded. You know, the smugglers are trying to make every last dollar they can off a given voyage. So they're putting, you know, 200 people who don't even have room to sit down or turn around into a boat that's meant to carry 35. 
so they're extremely uh, vulnerable. The smugglers are really uh, ruthless. We've heard stories about, you know, if people complain about the conditions, just getting thrown overboard. Um, even, you know, children, uh, pregnant women being uh, subjected to uh, extremely dangerous conditions. Of course, they are, they, they're doing it willingly because they are really so desperate to um, get out of the situations they find themselves in, in Libya, which is itself in chaos, in uh, Lebanon, which has like 30% of its population now made up of Syrian refugees mm -hmm. and it's a poor country to begin with. Um, so I think um, that the kind of desperation that's driving these flows is only going to intensify until we see some resolution of these conflicts. And uh, no easy resolutions on the horizon. Alas, no. Yeah, Kathleen Newland, thanks so much for coming in. Really appreciate it. Thank you.